Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick here at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. Today is Wednesday, December the 14th. It's time for our daily devotion. We are moving on with Revelation, and we're, today we are in chapter 2. So we have a lot of exciting stuff going on in chapter 2. So let's begin at verse 1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men that you have tested, those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things that you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practice of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. To the angel in the church of Smyrna, write, These are the words of him who is first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, an ear let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. To the angel in the church in Pergamum write, These are the words of him who has a sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, You have people there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna, I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. To the church in Thyatira write, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and your faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely, unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you. Only hold on to what you have until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my father. I will also give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. All right, so here in chapter 7, we begin... Oh, chapter 7. In chapter 2, we have the letter to the first of the, the first four of the seven churches who are being written to by John. And as we said yesterday, these seven churches represent churches really in any age. But they did have a specific referent to themselves in that time. Now, the first one that we start with is Ephesus. Ephesus was the largest of all the cities. It was the most cosmopolitan. 
Uh, there are several dealings of the apostles with Ephesus. So Paul was there in uh, Acts chapter 18 and 19. And uh, he, he lectures in the synagogue. He teaches in the synagogue for three months. And then he uh, goes and teaches at a lecture hall in, uh, I think it's called Tyrannus is the name of the lecture hall, presumably because he wasn't welcome in the synagogue anymore. So uh, there was a time when the apostles could go to the synagogues, and that time came to an end when um, the synagogues just did not accept that Jesus was the promised Messiah of the Old Testament. So Paul goes there, and uh, Ephesus was a church that lasted for many centuries, and uh, they had a number of Christian councils there in Ephesus, and um, some important um, some important claims uh, in Ephesus with like the Nicene Creed and and, and so on. Uh, the next church is Smyrna. Smyrna is uh, we're going in a clockwise direction now from Ephesus. Smyrna is another port city. Smyrna was um, a, a very important city. Uh, because it was the longest of the seven that lasted as a Christian city. And uh, all the way up into the 1900s. And uh, it wasn't until uh, the Turkish army came in shortly after or before World War II, I mean, World War I, and literally slaughtered uh, probably 100,000 Armenians and Greek Christians who were living there. There were Americans living there. They had to get out. Uh, this was very controversial because there were British warships in the harbor, and in order not to offend the Turks, they sat by and, and let this slaughter go forward. And it's possible you could get some of the verbiage that is mentioned here by John today and apply it to that event as late as the 1900s about the persecution and the suffering that they will uh, that they will endure. But there's no condemnation here for Smyrna, which is also interesting as opposed to Ephesus, which had some. Now, then we move on to Pergamon and Thyatira. Uh, Pergamum is admonished for holding um, or having some people among them who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans were people who thought that, uh, just like the Epicureans, that you could embrace sensuality and the faith at the same time. And so, because that's what they were doing in the Greek temples, and that's uh, what people were importing into the Christian church. So, uh, Pergamum is admonished for that. Thyatira also has a little bit of that. And Thyatira has something of a spokesman in this woman who is being defined by the Old Testament name of Jezebel. So uh, she is someone, Jezebel was the uh, wife of King uh, Ahaz in the uh, Old Testament. Or maybe it was Ahab. But um, she encouraged the worship of false prophets and uh, other awful things. And now she is being uh, labeled... Uh, the, the person in the church of, per of Thyatira is bearing this label uh, because she also is much like the Jezebel of the Old Testament. But there is some grace in here in giving her time to repent. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, harsh judgment is going to come upon them. So all four churches here that are mentioned today uh, have a com com commendation. Uh, Thyatira... Pergamum and Ephesus also have um, a, a rebuke that they're doing things wrong, that they are not being faithful to their calling. And so John is calling them out and admonishing them with the law uh, because they are all supposed to be proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ uh, while also honoring the law. So uh, proclaiming the gospel that we're saved by grace through faith, by the shedding of Christ's blood on the cross, and that by that shedding of blood we have eternal life. But because they are not being faithful to their calling, uh, they are being threatened with law and condemnation. So uh, we will continue tomorrow with the other three churches in Revelation chapter 3. Uh, let's move on now to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Okay, so uh, announcements for today. Tonight is our last midweek Advent service. That's happening. Uh, the supper is happening at 6 p.m., and then the service itself will be happening at 7. We're going to be talking uh, about the... 
Um, Lunciation was first, visitation was second. The Magnificat is today, this evening. So hope you will be on hand for, for this final evening prayer service for 2022. And then, uh, let's see, we have our Christmas program coming up this coming Sunday. The practice will be in the morning as usual during the Sunday school hour. And then the program itself will be um, that night at, uh, at 6 p.m. So we, we invite you to come and join us uh, for, uh, for this event as we give thanks to God and as we uh, celebrate the birth and nativity of his son. Uh, and then don't forget the Joy Campaign Fund is still open. So we're hoping that uh, people can continue to contribute to this throughout the remainder of the year. And uh, we can offset expenses to our, um, to our season, uh, Seeds of Faith Fund. <laughs> okay. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Daily Devotions this morning. God bless this. The rest of your Wednesday. I'll be back tomorrow as we move on to Revelation chapter 3.